Hi everyone and welcome back to Insight. If you own a 3D printer, you're probably aware of the fact that at times problems will arise that will require that you become like Sherlock Holmes in order to fix things. This is something that I had to do recently with an issue that was very frustrating but also somewhat difficult to diagnose. So if you're interested in knowing what the problem was and how I fixed it, then stay tuned and I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So a while back, I updated the firmware on my Ender 3 to enable manual mesh bed leveling as well as do a few other tweaks. In terms of hardware, my Ender 3 machine has been updated with the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 version 2, as well as the Big Tree Tech TFT35 LCD display. In order to update the firmware, I made the required changes in the configuration H file and then compiled the firmware. I updated the Ender 3, tested the manual mesh bed leveling configuration, and everything worked perfectly. You can watch the video on how to configure manual bed mesh leveling right here. Now, I have a second printer, which is the Ender 3 Pro, which is also updated with the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 version 2 and the TFT LCD display. So other than the fact that one printer is a regular Ender 3 and the other is an Ender 3 Pro, they are identical in every way, including the most important component when it comes to processing G-code and controlling the printer, and that's the printer's controller board. So after a few weeks of using the Ender 3 with the manual mesh bed leveling that I installed, I decided to update my Ender 3 Pro as well. I compiled new firmware, updated the printer, did a test print, and was completely surprised that with my Ender 3 Pro, I had a major issue. Randomly, the printer would stop printing while the plastic still oozed out of the extruder nozzle, and then, within a few seconds, the print would resume as if nothing happened. Needless to say, this was a major issue that basically rendered the printing useless, given that the pauses in printing left blobs of plastic on the print. I had no idea what the problem could be. The fact that I compiled firmware for the Ender 3 Pro that was identical to the firmware that I compiled for the Ender 3 made it even more puzzling. I thought that there might be a problem with the G-code and the way that the model was sliced, and so I tried re-slicing the print, but uh, there was no change. I also tried using another slicer, but again, there was no difference. So I needed to test this even more, and so what I did was uh, I tried using the G-code on the Ender 3, which was a machine that I knew worked just fine and lo and behold using exactly the same G code that I that I used and which was messed up on my Ender 3 Pro it worked perfectly fine on the Ender 3 which was um, very strange now given this reality I had to conclude that the problem was something other than the G code or the slicer now before I go on I need to say that I do all of my printing using Octoprint. The prints that messed up were initiated with Octoprint. So in order to see if Octoprint had anything to do with the problem, I sliced a calibration cube and printed it directly from an SD card, bypassing Octoprint altogether. And when I did this, the printer did not pause and the print completed flawlessly. So what this told me was that there was a communication problem between Octoprint and the printer. Now, I tested this further by printing out the same calibration cube using the same G-code, but this time using Octoprint. And when I did this, once again, the printer would start and pause, causing blobs to ruin the print. All right, so now I knew that the problem had something to do with Octoprint and the way it was communicating with the printer. Now, one obvious thing that I did was look at the Octoprint terminal to check for any warnings or errors. 
I probably should have done that earlier, but uh, I left it uh, until later because it just occurred to me. But in any event, when I did check the terminal, I noticed that there was a communication error message that maybe could explain what I was seeing. This is what the message said, and I'm quoting now. Communication timeout while printing, trying to trigger response from printer, configure long running commands or increase communication timeout if that happens regularly on specific commands or long moves. So I wasn't exactly sure what that meant, but in my mind, it confirmed that the issue was a communication issue and that it came from Octoprint. I knew that, but I didn't know where it originated. So the hard part now was trying to figure out what the cause was and to fix the issue. And this is where I had to do some guessing. Now, the first thing that occurred to me was that the problem probably originated in the configuration H file. Now, I need to tell you that in compiling the new firmware, I actually downloaded the code from the Big Tree Tech GitHub page. And I always like to download the code fresh when I do something. And I noticed that this code that I downloaded was recently updated by Big Tree Tech. And so it was not the exact same code that I used for my original firmware compilation. So the working theory that I had was that between the time that I did my original manual mesh bed leveling on my Ender 3 and the time that I updated my Ender 3 Pro, Big Tree Tech changed something either in the configuration H file or in the configuration ADV H file. So what I had to do was, of course, compare the two configuration H files to see if there was a difference between the one that I downloaded earlier and the one that I downloaded when I was trying to update my Ender 3 Pro. So I did the comparison. I compared the original download with the new one on the GitHub page, and I did find a difference. And the difference was in the command define serial underscore port. The original download um, had minus one as the first defined serial port, and number two was the second defined serial port. But in the new download from the Big Tree Tech, two was the first defined port, and minus one was the second. Now, I wasn't exactly sure what this meant, but after doing a bit of research on the internet, I found a message in the Octoprint community forum where this very problem was explained. So as it turns out, two is the serial port for the LCD display and minus one is the USB serial port. It added some sort of a glitch when printing using Octoprint. The interesting thing is that this glitch would never show up if a person just used an SD card as a way of bringing the G code to the printer. But as soon as Octoprint is introduced and the USB port is used via a Raspberry Pi over Wi-Fi, the blobbing glitch becomes a problem. So once I understood where the problem originated, the solution was really simple. It was a matter basically of reversing the numbers by putting minus one first and two second. This way, the USB port was prioritized, letting the G code travel to the printer unencumbered by the LCD screen. So after doing this, Octoprint worked perfectly and I was able to complete the prints without issues. So this was my experience and I actually had some takeaways from this experience, which I want to share with you. So number one, if you're into 3D printing, you're going to experience roadblocks and issues, and um, this is inevitable. So uh, 
be aware of this when you get into 3D printing. Number two, don't let potential issues scare you from updating your printer or taking a chance. You can always go back if uh, you need to, so you really don't risk anything by taking a chance. It actually teaches you something and it lets you know something new about your printer. Number three, if you do run into a problem, try to narrow down the problem as much as possible through a process of elimination and deduction. This is the Sherlock Holmes factor. And this is really important. Uh, try to eliminate things rationally and logically, and eventually, hopefully, you'll be led to the problem and you could fix it. Number four, this is really important. You will probably find lots of solutions on the internet, but chances are most of them will not apply to you and will be red herrings. So for example, in my case, there were posts all over the internet about a setting in Cura that causes the exact same issue as I was experiencing. Now, clearly Cura had nothing to do with my particular issue, given the fact that the original Ender 3 was able to print G code sliced in Cura just fine, but my Ender 3 Pro could not print the same G code. So don't be quick to follow what it says on the internet because sometimes the solutions given there are just not the right ones, even though it sounds like the problem is identical to what you're going through. Number five, even though everything might seem exactly the same between your two printers, you need to assume that something must be different somewhere, which is leading to the problem. I, I kept saying to myself, how can this be? How can it actually be the case that I'm having this issue uh, given the fact that uh, the two printers are exactly uh, the same? It doesn't make sense, but it does make sense. In computers, it always makes sense, even though on the surface it might seem completely irrational and unreasonable. Number six. Always work on these sorts of issues when you're wide awake and fresh. Do not tackle a problem like this when you're exhausted. While it might be tempting to try to solve the problem ASAP, a better approach is to get a good night's sleep and get back to solving the problem in the morning. Because if you work on these kinds of issues when you're really, really tired, chances are you're going to cause more of an issue. You're going to make things even worse. Number seven, and this is related to number six. And here I'm talking about the fact that if you can't come up with a solution, a good thing to do is to just let the issue simmer for a while in your unconscious. So basically leave it, go do something else, go to sleep, go watch TV, listen to some music, and let your unconscious deal with the problem. I can't tell you how many times I've had eureka moments by just letting my brain work on a problem in the background and all of a sudden um, I just had a kind of eureka moment and the answer came to me. Number eight, this is very important, stay calm. It's not the end of the world and eventually you'll find the solution even if it takes a week, two weeks, or a month. Th this is something that is going to happen if you get into 3D printing or any kind of technology. Inevitably, something's gonna happen, some issue is going to come up, and it's going to be really, really exhausting and stressful, but um, don't worry about it too much because the answer will come eventually and um, you'll deal with it. Number nine, inevitably, the answer is probably on the web somewhere. However, you need to be sure that there's a good probability that the answer you find is one that actually deals with the problem that you're having. Don't make the mistake of 
using an answer on the web that may not really be the answer to your specific problem because if you apply an answer that's not really a fix for your problem there's a good chance that you may make things worse and finally number 10 enjoy the process of problem solving it's one of the best things about 3d printing and it's really good for your brain now if I can only remind myself of this fact the next time I run into a really frustrating and hard to deal problem because I understand how hard it is and how stressful it is when your technology breaks down or when there's a software issue that is so difficult to diagnose it just uh, gives you a lot of stress and anxiety I totally understand I've gone through it went through it with this particular issue anyway that's it for this video I hope that you found it interesting and informative and if you're having the same issue as I experienced the solution is in the configuration H file in the serial underscore port options so before you go take the time to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell let me just tell you that on this channel I make videos about 3d printing drones photography and various technology issues now not all of the videos that I make may be of interest to you but I can tell you that at least some of the content that I'll be putting out will be of interest and uh, will probably be something that you will uh, find interesting and even if that's not the case it costs you nothing to subscribe and it will really help me out so until next time take care be well and I'll see you soon bye bye